Welcome to Spiritual Coach. I'm the host with the most repping the Holy Ghost, Brandon Tribble. I appreciate you stopping by. Now let's get to work on them spiritual muscles. Hello and welcome back to Spiritual Coach. Today we're going to be talking about the armor of God. We are modern day knights and God speaks in war terms a lot in the Bible. He wants us to realize that we are in fact in a war, a spiritual war. So we need to focus our attention in that way, to think as warriors, to be mindful of the war raging around us, and to participate in the war. Listen to these scriptures, 2 Timothy 2.4. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Now who are we pleasing? We're trying to please God. So we're not going to entangle ourselves with the affairs of this world, but with the affairs of God. Amen? 1 Timothy 1.18 This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. The good warfare, the warfare that we are all waging in this spiritual war. 1 Timothy 6.12 Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. I love that. We need to make sure that we are fighting, not just sitting on the sidelines seeing what will happen, but we're actively engaged in battle with the enemy on the Lord's side and his army. 2 Timothy 4, 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. We all need to be able to say that whenever our time comes to an end. We have fought the good fight. We, we fought in battle and we are victorious in him. In Jesus. 2 Corinthians 10.4 For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. What kind of weapons do we have? Are they machine guns? Are they catapults? No, we have spiritual weapons and spiritual armor. And we're going to check out this armor and weapons here for a second in Ephesians 6.10-20. through 20. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the schemes or the traps of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places, the devil and his demons. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, not pieces of it, but the whole thing, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, the days that we are attacked, the battles that come our way, and having done all to stand, done all that we can do. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts or arrows of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me the utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in change, that in I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Now let's break down this armor and weapons for a second. We're going to talk about the belt of truth. The belt of truth is used for upholding you in your way, being upright in your path. It also holds your sword, which is the word of God. So we can be confident when we speak, the word or the sword that we wield will be done so in truth. Now we'll talk about the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate was used to protect all the major organs, mainly so the heart. As we see, it's described as the breastplate of righteousness. 
when we have these things practiced towards God, our heart will be protected. Now, this particular piece that we're fixing to talk about isn't so mentioned in this way, but we understand from looking at armor in the old medieval times, uh, this is what it is called. It's called the sabaton, or the solaret. As it's mentioned in Ephesians, it says, the preparation of the gospel of peace. Our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And that's part of our armor that covers our feet. So with our feet being shod with the preparation of the gospel, or our learning and studying of the gospel, our feet shall be guided in the right direction and kept to the narrow path. Now let's talk about the shield of faith. The devil slings those arrows of doubt and fear and confusion and attacks. But when we trust in God and his word, our shield of faith will deflect those arrows. Now let's talk about the helmet of salvation. The devil loves to attack us in our minds, but when we have our minds focused on the fact we are saved and true Christians, lies about never being forgiven, you've done too much wrong, you have a bad past will not faze us. I believe it helps protect from other evil thoughts as well. Knowing that we are saved, we should want to live the saved life to live as saved beings, and the helmet of salvation will help us do just that. Now let's talk about the sword of the Spirit. I believe that we have two swords. We have a short sword and a long sword, which is seen typical in most medieval fights. Uh, medieval battle, you would have a short sword and a long sword. So as what I would determine, a short sword would be our memories. And most of us don't have that great of memory, so that's we're very limited to the amount that we can store in our brains, so that would be our short sword. But our long sword is the book, the Bible itself. I believe one of two weapons we have is the sword of the Spirit. Just as Jesus did when tempted on the mountain during his 40-day fast, when the devil would tempt, Jesus would quote scripture, thus eventually defeating the devil in a verbal battle, only using the word. Let us remember to take the same approach, for when we resist the devil, he will flee from us. Now, this is only speculative, but the final piece of weaponry I believe God has given us, at least mentioned in Ephesians, is a bow and arrow of prayer. And although it doesn't mention bow and arrow, we can look at what a bow and arrow does. It shoots to far distances, and it does mention prayer quite a bit there in that passage. This final piece of weaponry is only speculative, like I said, but regardless, naming it so is besides the point. I know that prayer is definitely a weapon, and a bow and arrow describes it correctly. Prayer reaches farther than our reach and can hit targets we may or may not have seen coming. So just like with a bow and arrow, you fire it and sometimes you're made just fire, firing volleys. Uh, many uh, people who were in those medieval fights would stand together and just fire at hordes of enemies. And they don't exactly know where that arrow is going to hit, but they're just firing. And in the same way, our prayers, you know, we just pray, God, will you protect us? We don't know what's coming. We don't know exactly where that prayer is going to hit, but God does. And we fire them all the same. And I believe those are a great example of the seventh piece of armor and weaponry that God gives us. Another piece of weaponry that I believe that God gives us is using the name of Jesus itself. His name is above every name. And at the name of Jesus, demons tremble. And I believe that when we rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus, there is power. So with that being said, I pray that you wage a good warfare. I pray that you put on your armor and use your weapons and fight against the devil. Don't be an easy target, but fight back. Use your shield. Use your helmet of salvation. Use your sword. Use all the pieces effectively. And I pray that God will help you to be great warriors for him and his kingdom. God bless you. Stay tuned to the next one. See you later.